everybody, this is Ginger, and this is Ginger Chat Show, and hope everybody's good. Uh, I know a lot of people in the Northeast are dealing with um, the floods that are happening right now, because of all the storms that have been hitting this past week, and things are not good. The Hudson Valley is full of water right now. Uh, last time I was through the Hudson Valley was back in the summer of 70, so, summer of 77, um, 1977, so, yeah, they're getting smashed over there. Hi, Nancy! Hi, Dorothy! How you guys doing? Um, there's more storms heading your neck of the woods. Uh... Especially in Nebraska and Kansas, the eastern part, they're going to get smashed. Um, some of them are like straight line winds. Not much in the way of tornadoes as of yet, but you know, things could change really fast. You know how Mother Nature is. She, when she makes up her mind, she makes up her mind and she does it. Right? Um, okay. Um, well, it is 66 degrees. I'm a little bit cold because it really cooled down really fast over the weekend. We were like just, just shy of 80 degrees yesterday, Sunday yesterday, and it was, it was okay. It wasn't too bad, but when it cools off really fast, I get a little cold. So, um, oh, okay. Yeah, well, they said most of the storms will be around dinner time. <laughs> you know, Mother Nature, she likes to interrupt around uh, dinner time. Okay, on to the news. Well, uh, today, this morning, over in New York, over in Manhattan, uh, this New York State judge, um, she slapped Steve Bannon a summary judgment against him. He has to pay $480,848.40 of his legal bill. And he's paid part of it, but he has not paid the rest of it. And like a typical mega rat idiot, they don't want to pay their bills. In other words, they're copying Trump. Well, it could get them into trouble, real big trouble. Um, anyway, she slapped and said, no more excuses, you will pay it now. You have the money, you pay it now. So he was trying to put on all these excuses and everything else, and she said, nope, you don't contempt to court. And when that happens, you're in jail. Then you'll be forced to pay it, okay? So that's what's happening with him. Uh, the law firm that represented him filed a lawsuit against him and say, hey, we need, you need to pay this bill. Uh, David Bantam and Costello uh, LLC, uh, they're a law firm. And uh, one, one of the lawyers there is now a witness against uh him. Uh, anyway, there's a trial next year, next spring, that's going to be against Bannon on this. You know, unless he settles out of court or, or, or they did something. So anyway, it's karma for them. That's what my thing says about karma. Now, speaking of karma, you remember... Oh, the, the last Olympics, the last two Olympics, whatever. There was a team doctor by the name of Larry Nasser who had sexually abused the gymnastics, U.S. gymnastics team, sexually abused them. Well, he's in prison right now in Florida. He's at the, um, uh... U.S. Penitentiary Coleman II, and this is in Florida, and it's a maximum security prison. Anyway, he was stabbed this 
stamped over the week. He got stamped yesterday. Um, in the neck and, and in the back, I think it is. But anyway, he's listed as um, satisfactory condition. So he's at the hospital there. Uh, but anyway, he's serving a life sentence, a number of life sentences for his crimes, his rape crimes on that. So, um, you should have kept his back to the wall on that. So, I don't know what they're going to do there. Not that I really care, but sometimes these things happen. And somehow somebody got, got to him. I don't know how they found out about his uh, crime or, you know, what he was in for. I don't know how they found out, but his rapists there are very low on the very bottom of the totem pole, okay? Uh, they... The prison population frowns on rapists and women, women or domestic abusers. They frown on them. They really do. Uh, so he may have been, he may be, he may have pissed off somebody. I don't know. Um, I had to close my window because over here in JBLM, which is over here, uh, they're getting me to have their air show next weekend. So, it's a little noisy. Um, and of course, you know, uh, as I mentioned before, um, the Hudson Valley in New York has been hit by the storm. It's been going on all last week and through this weekend. Uh, some of the rocket launches did occur, but some are delayed due to some of the storms that are happening right now. <coughs> so far, we have not had any hurricanes. Knock on wood, Dorothy. Um, I haven't seen notice about hurricanes, if there's any. Hold on a second, let me check my weather. Hold on a minute. Um, uh, I don't see anything yet. Okay, I haven't seen anything on there yet, so your, your coast is clear right now, uh, Dorothy, um, and the storms, but there are, there are some storms that are starting to brew, okay, um, so if you're interested in storm watching, you know, everything, how it works and everything, go to see the storm on YouTube. His name is Vince Watley. It's, his last name is spelled differently than mine. Uh, his name is Vince Watley and he, uh, he's, he's a professional storm chaser and also he is a meteorologist and also he is a EMT. Uh, so he provides after storm, if anybody's hitting an area, whatever, he goes and checks on the people there to see if they're okay and they need any medical help or any other help type thing. Um, which is good, because they need them on the ground. The National Weather Service really takes these guys, take the, um, um, storm chasers seriously. Um, and really listen, because they, they give a better visual on the ground. Sometimes radar doesn't always pick up everything. Uh, and depends on whether radar is set up and, you know, 
what kind of technology they have with all these radars and everything. Uh, but they really um, rely on the storm chasers to report. Um, the other day, what was it, Sunday? Or was today Monday? No, it was Saturday. Uh, there's a little town called Kim, Colorado. Uh, it's a town of about 63 people. Very, very tiny little town. And Kim, or not Kim, but uh, Vince went through it and he, want, he since he noticed they didn't have any um, um, you think that they would areas that are prone to Tornadoes. You think that they would have a tornado siren? Kim doesn't have a tornado siren. They have a volunteer fire uh, fire station there, and they probably use their siren. But uh, anyway, he went in and he spotted the uh, mayor there and said, "Hey, get tell everybody to get under cover now, because you've got a you're under tornado warning." And he's like, "Uh oh, okay." Um, so a lot of people took cover and made sure everything was, you know, safe and everything. Um, sometimes you don't know what Mother Nature's going to throw at you. Here, uh, let's see, what do we here? Well, we got cloud cover here. We got, we got thunderheads building up here. Um, one time, what was it, a month ago? Over a month ago, yeah, about a month ago, sitting right out here was a wall cloud, and I was going, <laughs> "Oh, this is going to be fun." Um, it was doing, you know, like you see on TV and you see on the storm chasers, you see this wall cloud, you know, that's kind of shaped around, sort of like a mothership, as they call them. Um, there was one hanging out here, and I was going, <laughs> okay, we got to keep an eye on it. Because those little babies, sometimes, if conditions are just right, they will produce a tornado. Which, here, we don't really need. <laughs> uh, we had a tornado hit, hit here, hit in Tacoma, actually. Let's see, back in 1992 time frame, um, it was a, later rated as the EF-1, well, almost the EF-2, uh, it went down Pacific Avenue here, and, uh, this one guy that just moved here, he goes, I know what those things are, he felt like he was being followed, um, <coughs> there was some dip. <coughs> <coughs> there was some damage. Uh, the church just replaced its stained glass windows. Well, they had to replace them again because the tree went through this. Um, when the tornado hit, the tree went right through the church's stained glass windows. But right through the lobby, right into the sanctuary. Um, and needless to say, the pastor there was not very happy. Because uh, there were a lot of tornado warnings and watches that were going on. A space of a couple hours. Everybody would just keep an eye to the sky and say, okay, where is this thing going to hit? Because the system was just right for it. There was some thunderstorms popping around, and um, again, as I said before, you never know what she's going to throw at you. Um, now, there is a big controversy that's going on regarding the uh, U.S. sending cluster bombs to Ukraine. Well... Some people think it's wrong. I go, well, no, it's not wrong. We're supporting Ukraine. We're giving them all the help we can. Russia's been sending 
uh, dropping cluster bombs on Ukraine. So if that's the only thing that Russia understands, then they need to have cluster bombs dropped on them and see what happens. Putin, it needs to be, he needs to be put in his place is what he really needs to be done. And I wish the FS, hey T, I'll, I'll watch your video l later, okay? Glad you're here, T. Uh, but, you know, if that's the only thing that Kremlin understands, then by all means drop a whole bunch of cluster bombs on them. And then, then of course, you've got some of these GOP mega, mega rats, as I call them. Uh, sit there and go, oh, you can start World War Three and everything else. And I was going, excuse me, what do you think Putin's trying to do? I mean, a lot of other nations around the Baltic Seas area, Baltic state, states area, are supporting Ukraine. So, I think some of these mega rats need to get their um, uh, heads examined. You know? I really do. Uh... Oh, speaking of which, I was watching Minus Touch this morning. And they had a little segment regarding the Michigan Party GOP. You know, the mega rats over there. Well, <clears throat> they have no money. Uh, their parties have no money. Well, now they're uh, not only fighting among themselves, but they're doing it literally. They're having little, literal fist fights going on. And, uh, of course, people are leaving the GOP in droves. They really are. There's a lot of people that are waking up and say, you know what? No more. We'll go, we'll either vote independent or go to the Democratic Party. Um, we act more like an adult, uh, the Democratic Party acts more like adults than the GOP. And, um, oh, okay, I'll take a look at it, T. Uh, thank you. So, anyway, um, they're losing money. Uh, Arizona GOP, they are out of money. They can't support their candidates. Michigan can't support their candidates in the state, the state level, and also the federal level. They can't support their candidates. They're running for Senate and rep and House. Okay, that's their fault. And this one person who has left the GOP kept telling them why they keep losing. Because A, you're not listening to your constituents. You're not listening to the to the voters. And you're not on the ground and really talking to them. Okay. So, uh, people like that, some of the, I think some of their leadership should not be in the leadership position. This one gal, I forgot what her name was, but she um, sounded off about something and she was a chairman of the Michigan GOP party there, state party there, and <coughs> she sounded just like he who shall not be named. Uh, you know, same tactics, same projections, same gaslighting, all this other crap that she's pulling. Well, you know what? That's why they're losing. Because you get nuts in here like her. Oh, speaking of nuts! Guess who got booted from the Freedom Caucus? Marjorie Taylor Greene. She was given the ultimate boot out of the Freedom Caucus. And she said, 
Well, that's because they think I'm not radical enough. Uh, everything else, no. They're just sick and tired of her interfering with the house member's job. And house member's trying to work things, okay? The one who instigated booting her out of there is Bobert and one other guy, I don't know what his name was, but one other member of the Freedom Caucus. And of course, he was going to leave it anyway and just, you know, work solo. Um, she and Bobert had a, oh, was it a week ago, a week, week, week ago or two weeks ago, on the house floor had a, a um, let's say verbal war. I thought they were going to haul off and sock each other. Uh, of course, that's not the first time that's happened on the house floor. If you remember back in your history, back in 18... 18 <coughs> I would think it was 1866 <coughs> or 1867. Uh, there was a house member that was saying, hey, we need to not, he did not want the North to go down there and carpet bag the South. He says, no, they've already been beaten. We just need to rebuild it and we don't need to carpet bag them. Well, this one uh, person, I don't know what party he belonged to. I don't know if he was Democrat or if he was a the brand new Republican Party back then. Um, anyway, one House member shot him. He didn't kill him, but he wounded him. And uh, I don't know what happened in that case, but that's not the first time that's happened on the House floor. And, uh, of course, I'm sitting there laughing at, at Green because she keeps yelling about Oh, they climb, they climb, they climb. But you know what? She should look at herself in the mirror. Um, you people say they don't like politics. Well, I am sorry to say there's always politics in some form. Okay, if you really, really look at, okay, look at your neighbors, look at your coworkers. You, okay, see. Look at, you know, like you have office politics in your, at your workplace, right? Um, I ran into it a lot when I was at Boeing, okay? I pretty much tried to ignore it. Um, I go, you know, I'm here to work, but I'm not going to do office politics type thing. Um, I had one supposed lead that, she kept interfering, micromanaging everybody, and I told her, I said, I don't work for you. I work for the Boeing Company. I don't work for you. I work for my boss, who is our manager. I don't work for you. She didn't like that. Well, that's just too bad. Well, she was ultimately called into the office and read the riot act and told to sit her down, do her job, and listen and stop micromanaging because she's going to replace her for another lead which, which he did he appointed a new lead and um that lead was much better then ultimately i was given a lead position to run the uh or system because they needed a lead there and so i was chosen to lead and so i was lead like for five years there until I was laid off. Um, but, you know, you run into politics everywhere. Everywhere you go. Whether it's in a store, you know, grocery store, department store, out on the parking lot. Um, and, of course, heaven forbid, I hope you don't run into any politics in the church. Okay. It, politics does not really belong in a church. Like I said, it's anywhere. Okay. So, well, uh, it's pretty much time for me to um, sign off. 
and uh, I'm going to see if I can try and catch the all-star game that's happening in Seattle right now because they're, they're on their all-star break um, Major League Baseball so anyway uh, let me double check my calendar Okay, uh, I will see you at 1 o'clock on Wednesday for my chat show then. Be sure to insist, persist, and push back. Is there any other subjects you would like to discuss? Um, flash me a note. Um, you go to, uh, here, let me give you my two... I may give you my one address that I use for both business and my chat. And just put in the subject line, um, chat show subject whatever you want to talk about um that way you you know could contact me and everything you just get you know what you, what you guys want to discuss and everything so anyway i will see you tomorrow night at at uh, the blue dot family meeting um and I hope all is well. And I'll post this video on my YouTube channel. Okay? Alright. Love you guys. Take care. Hugs. Stay safe. Keep an eye to the sky. And I will talk to you on Wednesday. Okay? Love you. Bye-bye.